Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my first impressions reaction of Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. So, this is a series that I've obviously heard of a lot. Um, and I've even seen maybe a clip or two here or there, uh, just completely randomly. Um, it, it's one of those series that made quite a big impact on the anime community. Um... So what I know about this series, I know it is a satire of American or just Western in general animation. I know that it is um, it is starring the two titular characters, Panny and Stocking, and that they are angels. And I know the big end of the series twist. I'm not going to tell what it is here, but I know what it is because I've just heard it so many times all over the internet. <laughs> um, at this point, uh, after so long after it had come out, it's not really a surprise I would know it. But that being said, I don't know too much else about this. I, I don't know, like, for example, how fan servicey it is, um, if at all. Um, I know it's a mature series. I know it's more of an adult-oriented series, but I don't know, like, in what ways, because that could mean a lot of things. There are some adult-oriented series that are just super violent, some that are really sexual, some that are um, gory as hell. Like, have you ever seen Corpse Party Tortures as a whole? <laughs> like, that's pretty much all that's going. That's, that's what makes that one adult. It's just super fucking gory. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what exactly to expect with this. Um, there's a couple reasons why we're choosing to check it out, though, uh, why we're choosing to do a first impression reaction. One, there's a new season that has been announced. Um, it's been a long time and everything. And people have been wanting a second season, and it looks like it's finally going to happen. Uh, so I think it's a fairly good time to actually finally check this out. But on top of that, um, as you guys know, I had just dropped Kill a Kill. I gave it a second chance after having tried checking it out years ago, and I just I couldn't stand it. It, it just it's clearly not for me, not with my sensibilities towards stuff like that. Um, this is a series that I wouldn't say I've heard talked about in the same kind of wheelhouse as uh, Kill a Kill. But for some reason, I've always compared the two. Like, again, I've never seen panty and stocking before but for some reason every time i've like even seen like a screenshot or something from her seen character designs for some reason my mind instantly went to kill a kill i don't know why I, I i genuinely have no idea i don't know if there's even anything about these series that are really similar um and so my thought process is i kind of want to find out i kind of want to check this out see what it's like to give it that kind of fair shake. Um, since I gave Kill a Kill a fair shot again, um, I, I decided to give this one a shot, finally. Um, and I think a first impressions reaction is a good way to do it. I, I think it's around 12 episodes. Um, it's not super long. Um, pretty average one core anime. <laughs> but it had such a big impact. Like People still look like really fondly upon this series um and, and it's really affected a lot of comedy series out there um so I'm, I'm really interested to see what it's all about 
Um, so I've seen character designs before. I know, I think, four characters. Two uh, ones outside of Penny and Stocking. I know who Garter Belt is, just in terms of appearance. And I think there's a character named Brief that I've seen before. Um, but I don't know, like, details about them or anything. Um, I do know that there is... That, that a lot of people have a qualm with the design of black people in the series. I, I've been seeing that going around on Twitter lately since the announcement of the second season and everything um and yeah it's a thing a lot of animation has had a problem with for a long time and i i very much get that and i even with understanding that this is a satire of western animation it's like it's still not something you should exactly do and the shaman king re re reboot fixed that mind you so maybe panty and stocking could too um, but I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to just take this as what it is and, and go in with a clear mind that it is a satire. It's meant to be making fun of a lot of tropes and whatnot. So I, I'm not taking it too seriously in that regard. Um, now, since this is a satire on Western animation, I'm going to be reacting to the dub. I, I feel it appropriate, plus I've been reacting to a lot of series, or just even watching a lot of series on my own time, in the sub lately. Um, and, and so I want to I do another dub one. And again, I just think this one makes the most sense with that. It just, with, it, with this more comedic leaning, as well as specifically what it's pa parodying, satirizing, I think I think it just makes the most sense to have this one be in the dub. Um, I don't know who's in the dub. I don't know like offhand any of the VAs who are in it. I, I've probably heard a lot of them in other places, but I just don't know who they are. But I'm definitely interested to see what comes from this. Um, but yeah, I very much, uh, I'm very much interested to see where this goes. We're going to give it the one episode today, as we usually do with first impressions reactions. And we'll go from there. If you're new to the channel, if you're, if you found the channel through this, welcome, first of all. Uh, but if you don't know what a first impressions reaction, it's basically as it sounds. I check out a series' first, sometimes second episode as well, um, and basically determine what I think of it. I, I determine, is this a series I could react to, or is it something I'd rather watch on my own time, or do I just not like it? And I take the, that thought that I form, based on my own personal watching experience, my own personal tastes and everything. And yeah, I determine whether I will react to it or not in the future. Um, if I choose to react to it, it will come at some point in the future. We have two slots on our schedule currently for shows that are um, don't are first impressions rewards, not rewards, first impressions reactions. Um, so those two slots, uh, which I'm trying to think of which slots they are currently um because i i pre-recording shit so but yeah those two slots are uh specifically shows that i did a first impressions reaction on uh and decided i wanted to react to more now just because i choose to react to more doesn't mean necessarily i'm going to get through the whole series there's a lot of factors that goes into that and sometimes i just don't like a series and i'm not going to force myself to continue watching if I am not enjoying it. It hurts the reactions, it hurts viewer engagement. It's it's not a good time. Um, so hopefully I like this enough to not only continue but to get all the way through it. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So we're just going to get into this, hope for the best, and see what Penny and Stocking with Garter Belt has in store for us. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below.
Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, I looked up the voice cast, um, because I, I was curious and it didn't say in the credits. Um, and yeah, I, I was right that the plumber was Todd Haberkorn. <laughs> um, but on top of that, Panty is voiced by Jamie Marchi, uh, who is Lukua in Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Uh, which I can very much hear, now that I know. Um, I, I very much hear it. Stocking is Monica Rial, um, who is Uzaki from uh, Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out. She's Sue from My Hero Academia, Balma from Dragon Ball, among many other things. Uh, Garter Belt is Chris Sabat, which, yeah, I guess I can hear. <laughs> um, Chris Sabat's known for a lot of things. Vegeta, Kuwabara, um, Piccolo, as well as Vegeta. Um, he was also in uh, Ruby as Watts. And apparently Chuck is Ian Sinclair. Like, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Ian Sinclair, uh, he's Space Dandy. He's Brooke from One Piece. And it's like, what? <laughs> Chuck just kind of makes noises. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess there are plenty of voice actors out there who do that for a living. Um, Alan Tudyk has done it quite a lot. Uh, D. Bradley Baker's kind of known for doing that. Um, so it's not out of the ordinary. But yeah, it's like I know all of these VAs and um, um, a couple of them I've actually met in person. I've met Todd Haberkorn, I've met Ian Sinclair, I've met Monica Rial. I have not met uh, Jamie Marchi or Chris Sabat yet, but I really would like to. Um, but let's talk about, uh, let's talk about this first episode. So... This was split into two segments, like a lot of Western animation is. Not all of Western animation, but a lot of it has been split into two segments, especially in more of the classic days, like uh, Classic Cartoon Network. You think of stuff like Powerpuff Girls, Cow and Chicken, etc. It's like a lot of the shows, most of the shows during that time, I would say, were split into segments uh, and had the title cards and everything. Um, this is doing the same kind of thing. And there are shows nowadays that do that, too. Um, Ghost and Molly McGee, for example. Um, but yeah, it's... It's a common thing for Western animation that a lot of anime just doesn't do. Um, it's not an anime thing. So, that definitely ties into the satire of Western animation we see here. Um, and both of these segments in this first episode were predicated on basically a one-note immature joke. And they, they basically made it, an entire episode segment out of a one-note uh, immature joke. The first segment being poop joke. Everyone knows of poop jokes. They know they're super immature and usually unfunny. And the second segment was sex joke. Everything is about sex. Everything they say is an innuendo and everything. Which, there there was some sex stuff in the first episode and all, too. But, you know, it was just... It, that was more of the joke of the second segment. Um, and their goal here was clearly... We're going to take these one-note immature jokes that aren't usually funny. And we're going to be so bombastic and ridiculous about it that we're going to try to bring it back around to being funny. We're going to take it to basically its, its most extreme, go completely overboard, and combine that with really great animation great voice acting which I, I don't know how the Japanese originally uh, sounded for that but um, I, I'm sure the voice acting is 
all good in that too. Um, but we're just going to combine all of this to make like something that is absolutely insane, absolutely stupid as fuck, but in the most entertainingly fun way possible. And that's kind of how I view this. This this series is stupid as fuck. It's it's absolutely dumb. It, it it's completely dumb. But in the funniest way possible. It's genuinely funny. It's so off the rails that it it it, it doesn't give you a moment to even react to a joke before it's throwing another one in your face. And usually that's a problem. But the frantic nature of this, the frantic nature of the comedy in this series, actually works to its benefit. It, it very much is trying to have that kind of style. That kind of high energy, over the top, adult, but also immature humor kind of theming to it. And it somehow, against all odds, works. It's funny. It's entertaining. You want to see all of these ridiculous, over-the-top, sexual, and, and immature jokes. You want to see Panny and Stocking kick some ass. You want to see them engage in their vices. You want to see Garter Belt yell at them. You want to see the villains be absolutely batshit stupid. Like they're they're seriously like it's, it's ba they're basically Conquer's Bad Fur Day villains. Like the first episode, basically, it, it was just the Great Mighty Pooh. Like, come on. And the thing is, my sense of humor. actually kind of works for this. I, I, I find the jokes funny. I, I enjoy the comedic elements to this. And e like you even saw in the reaction. It made the same joke like right after I had made it. I, I predicted what the joke was going to be because my sense of humor aligned with what they were going for at that moment. It, it's exactly the same kind of just humor that I clicked with there. And that that moment specifically actually kind of impressed me that it's like, I, because I, I've obviously said things before where it's like, oh, like a second later or something in the episode, the characters or whatnot says the same thing I've said. It happens. A lot of people have done that. A lot of reactors I've seen have uh, predicted what the characters are going to say and everything. And, and usually it's just like, oh, it's obvious what they're going to say here. It's obvious what the next line's going to be, yada, yada. It's just, it's something you can infer based on watching and knowing the characters and knowing how the, the writing is going. But with the humor here, it's like, it just clicked with me so quickly that when I predicted it, like right before it was about to be said, it's like, it somehow like surprised me and, and impressed me. It's like, this is, this feels like it's smart with its humor. Like, again, it's the dumbest, most immature, basic bitch humor out there but it handles it in such a surprisingly smart clever way through its over the top and ridiculous as hell writing and, and just how absolutely batshit stupid everything in this series clearly is that that's kind of the appeal of it it's it's not even it, it's not even one of those situations where it's so bad it's good because it's not bad. It takes something that should be bad and makes it good. Beyond all odds. 
Now, I don't know if every episode, every segment of every episode is going to be like this. Um, I, I don't know if this is going to be consistently as good throughout its entire run. But this first episode legitimately impressed me. Because, again, I, I don't like poop jokes. And most of the time, sex jokes can grate on me as well. Because they're all the same. They're cheap, they're easy, they're not good and not funny. But, again, beyond all odds, this series somehow makes them funny. And I don't know if all the jokes and all the lines of dialogue and everything are the same in the dub as they are in the original Japanese. I don't know how accurate the um, translation was here. But... If it is different, I'm very glad I chose to watch the dub. Because it the writing here is surprisingly good. And if it is the same, like if it is like as close to the original Japanese translations and all as possible, then just massive credit to the creators of this series. This is a Gainax series, which usually with studios like trigger and gynax and all it's very hit or miss for me um because it's like a lot of times it, it feels like style over substance um but there are those hits from these companies that you know are all basically the same let's be honest um gurren lagan outside of a couple issues I, I had with it um is a great series i've seen it multiple times and it is a genuinely great series there's just a couple things that I have issue with in it. Um, and I'm just hoping that this series continues to be as good, that Panya Stocking with Garbo continues to be as good as we react to the rest. Because yes, we are reacting to the rest after this. Again, this first episode impressed me that much. It, it, it surprised me. I, I didn't know going in what this was going to be like. I, I had no idea what the humor was going to be like. I Again, I had maybe seen one or two clips before, but it's been years. Um, and I've seen what the character designs look like plenty. Because um, people still make fan art of it. Both safe for work and not. Um, and so I've seen plenty of both of those. Even in more modern days, more modern times, people are still very into this series. And that's been made very clear by the response to the second season uh, when that was announced just the other day. People freaked. I, I, like, the response to that was bigger than the response to the Trigun revival. It was bigger than the response to the new Bleach trailer. Like, I was seeing everybody talking about the return of panty and stocking it was everywhere this series is very popular and i've always known that i've always understood that i just didn't know why because i never saw it i never gave it a chance um the tiny bit i did know about it i wouldn't say turned me off of it but just never gave me enough interest in wanting to check it out. Um, but I'm so glad I did. And I, I, I'm shocked to say that. Again, it's, it's wildly surprising to me how good, I en how good this was, how much I enjoyed it. it. It is not what I would ever expect to like. It seems very much like a series I should hate. But again, the writing, the dialogue, the humor, everything is just done so well in just in just the right way that it makes it really good and really enjoyable. Now, I'm not going to say like this is the best thing I've ever reacted to or anything. No, it's nowhere near. <laughs> um, not even for first impressions reactions. Um, but it's, again, surprisingly very good. And I definitely want to see more. So yeah, like I said, we are going to be uh, continuing it somewhere down the line. I don't know exactly when. Um, at this point, 
uh, first impression reactions. Uh, we just get to whatever we want to whatever points. Um, and, and there are quite a few older ones that I do still need to get back to. Um, ones that I had done in the past that I still haven't gotten to. Stuff like Watchmen and Agent Carter and all. Um, so this one is probably not going to come right away. But I do plan to uh, bring it in as soon as I'm able. Um, I just want to get to maybe a couple other things first. I don't know. We'll see. It's gonna. De it, it's all gonna depend on my mood and my what I'm most interested in checking out at the time and all. We'll see. But this is definitely being added to the list for future uh, first impressions reaction uh, continuation videos. <laughs> it's it's a it, it's a lot to say. Um, but yeah, like I I really enjoyed this. And, and again, the voice cast is great. Like, Jamie Marchie, I, I, I swear I've had to have heard her in other things besides just uh, Dragon Maid as well. But it's like, knowing that it's her, it's like, instantly the voice clicks with me. It's like, oh yeah, that's very much her. Like, that's so obviously her. Oh, she's Mount Lady in My Hero. And again, just thinking about it, it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's fucking obvious. Granted, I watch the sub more than the dub for My Hero, but I have watched the dub. Um, um, she's also an Attack on Titan as Anka Reinberger, Berger. I don't know the character. Um, that's past where I ever got. Um, uh, she's in Borderlands 3, Fruits Basket 2019. Oh, she plays Desiree Delight in Ace Attorney Season 2, apparently. I, I never even got through all of Season 1. I, I, I definitely would be interested in watching more of that oh also she's uh go go matsuoka in free which is another thing i need to get back to by the way <laughs> um okay was i watching the yeah i was watching the dub for free yeah because uh uh oh god i can't think of his name i can't think of any of the names of that right now but yeah i was definitely watching the dub uh there are a lot of actors who were in Pop Team Epic because the characters changed their voices like every episode. Oh, she was a character in Ancient Magus's Bride. Okay. Okay, KO. Green Guts. Okay. Is that one of the the future patrol, like Red Action? I, I would think so, based on the name. We don't see them that often. I've gone down a rabbit hole of just looking at Jamie Marchie voices now. <laughs> uh, oh, she was Yunko Enoshima from Danganronpa? Okay. I definitely have seen that, and I, I did watch it in dub. It's been a long time, mind you, but... Geez, she has a lot of voice credits. She was five in Terror and Resonance? Oh, wow. Kiki in Snow White with the Red Hair? Oh, she was in Gangsta. I never finished that. Apparently, it, it doesn't really stick the landing from what I've heard. Wait, she's Liz Thompson from Soul Eater? I mean, that's specifically showing Soul Eater not, but I, I think it's the same VAs for the legacy characters who are in that. She's Rinka from Assassination Classroom. She's, uh, oh God, I can't think of her actual name. The main female lead, it, it lists her as black haired woman because her name is kind of a spoiler for the series. Chiyuki, that's it. Chiyuki from Death Parade. Um, I love Death Parade. And I've watched that in both sub and dub. Uh, she's a couple minor characters in Devil is a Part-Timer. That's fun. That's another thing that's coming back with another season. She was in Space Dandy. As, I guess, some kind of fish alien thing.
it looks like. I hate that I know this, but she was in uh, Koriwa Zombie Dezuka as uh, Eucla Wood Hellsythe. Uh, in in the fantasy because she doesn't normally speak. I I hate that I know that because I don't like that series, but I I do know the series. Um. Wolf Children, okay. I saw that once. <laughs> oh, she's in Sea Control. That is such an underrated series. If you have not seen Sea the Money, actually, it's not even called Sea Control. It's called Sea the Money of Soul and Possibility Control. If you haven't seen the, the the series, though, definitely check it out. It's a very uh, underrated series. Um, it's about why capitalism is bad. <laughs> yeah, there's Panty and Stocking. Shiki. Oh, she was uh, Kyoko Ozaki and Shiki. I know who that is. She was Rebecca in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Holy shit, I know a lot of her voices. Like, more than I realized. She was Shizuka Nikonome in Rosario Vampire? That's awesome. Nikonome Sensei was awesome. One of my favorite characters in Rosario Vampire. Also a series a lot of you probably would not think I would like, but I do. I have an AMV for it on the channel. <laughs> I've heard of Strike Witches, never saw it. Yeah, there's the regular Soul Eater, Liz Thompson. I like I like the Thompson sisters. She was Chloe and Spice and Oh, Chloe was the bitch, right? She was like the friend who ended up betraying uh Lawrence, I think, and Holo. I think so. I haven't seen Spice and Wolf in a good minute, but I think she was the one who ended up betraying them. Yeah, I'm just I'm just going down a complete rabbit hole here. She was in an Iron Chef America video game. That's hilarious. Or on High School Host Club is Shizuru Maihara. Wow. That's taking it back. That's a classic series. Uh da, 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 da. There's just so many. I didn't realize she did this many roles. Dragon Ball GT is just some random side characters. That's hilarious. She's Miss Valentine in One Piece and Dr. Kabato and Victoria. S Holy shit. She's a lot of characters I like in One Piece. She's in Detective Conan as quite a few characters too. Oh, she's Jury in Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, that's fun. If you don't know, Jury was one of the announcers during the Black Tournament in Yu Yu Show. Anyway, anyway, I got I just went on an entire tangent of looking at Jamie Marchie's uh, acting credits there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've said what I was going to say, so you got the context of the entire uh, of the entire thing and all. The entire afterthoughts. I that was just a little bonus, I guess. Um, but yeah, like I said, we're definitely continuing this at some point, so stay tuned for that for the future. Um, but in the meantime, tell me in the comments below what did you think of this first episode, both segments for Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.